So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Poppy Linux. Poppy Linux is a project that aims to provide distributions to the home user that are ready to use, easy to use, relatively small in size, fast, versatile, customizable, offered in a variety of flavors, and are all round varied. I imagine that most of you watching this video might know Poppy Linux because you've installed it on an old machine. And it needs to be said that for that purpose, it is fantastic. When I say that Poppy is lightweight, I mean it is really lightweight. According to the Poppy Linux developers, it can run at a reasonable pace on a 900 megahertz Pentium with 300 megabytes of RAM. And in my experience, I've seen Poppy run incredibly fast on an old Windows XP machine. One thing that I find interesting about Poppy Linux is that it's not actually a single distribution. It's actually a variety of distributions built using the same set of tools and the same set of Poppy specific applications and configurations. They also, generally speaking, provide a consistent user experience between them, so it shouldn't matter too much which version of Poppy you choose. The main difference between them is what distribution's binaries they're compatible with. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Fossa Pop, which is binary compatible with Ubuntu Focal Fossa, which is Ubuntu 20.04. My only problem with this release is that the default wallpaper isn't nearly as cute as Teha Pops, which is completely unacceptable to me. But with all that said, let's go ahead and boot up Puppy Linux and see what we get. The first thing that will happen when you boot up Puppy Linux is that it will copy itself into RAM. This means that you'll get very impressive performance from Puppy Linux even on old machines. This is particularly useful on old machines that still have mechanical hard drives, as the RAM is vastly faster than those old slow drives. It also means that you don't need to install Puppy Linux on the hard drive if you don't want to, as it can just run from the RAM. So you really can just boot up Poppy Linux and get to work right from the install media. Once Poppy Linux is fully booted, you'll be greeted by the desktop and a quick setup utility. The quick setup utility will let you perform a wide variety of tasks, such as changing your country settings, changing your display resolution, and adjusting a wide variety of network settings, including enabling a firewall and forcing internet applications to run in a limited user mode. Once you're finished with the quick setup, you're shown a welcome screen that will help you get set up with Poppy Linux. This welcome screen helps you get connected to the internet and contains a shortcut to the setup utility and document documentation. Poppy's setup utility is quite helpful and gives the user a friendly way to adjust all of Poppy's basic settings. I also think that the documentation is quite handy too. It tells the new user how to do basic things such as view multimedia files and edit Microsoft Office documents. It also has some more advanced pages such as an explanation of the root user and a guide on how to use regular expressions. Sadly though, I do have to complain a little bit about this documentation. For as good as it is that it's here, I think that for new users it'd be insufficient since it doesn't really provide any information on how to use the desktop and is a bit light on information on how to form basic tasks. But to be honest, I think that Puppy is easy enough to get to grips with that most users probably won't need any documentation. Once you've gone through the welcome screen, you're then left to your own devices on the desktop. There are a variety of shortcuts on the desktop by default that are labeled according to what they do instead of what program they are, which I think is going to annoy a lot of experienced Linux users, but personally I think it's a great decision, and I think that it's going to be really helpful since I imagine that a huge use case for Puppy Linux is likely installing it on less tech-savvy family members or friends' older machines so that they can still do the basics while also using up-to-date software. If you want to access the other applications installed on the system, you can do so through Puppy Linux's start menu. The start menu generally reminds me of Windows 9X, so if you're familiar with those operating systems, then Puppy Linux should be quite familiar to you. But even if you don't have experience with Windows 9X, I think that the UI of Puppy Linux is easy enough for anyone to use no matter how much prior experience you have. The only thing that I would say about Puppy Linux's desktop is that it isn't exactly the most pretty operating system in the world. But to be honest, I do still think that it looks reasonably modern and frankly, being pretty isn't really the point of Puppy Linux. One of the things I find most impressive about Puppy Linux is just how much software it manages to fit in a relatively small ISO size. With Puppy Linux, you'll probably find a program to do most tasks right out of the box. Usually I would call this bloat, but given the fact that Puppy Linux's ISO size is under 500 megabytes, I really can't complain. Some programs that are included by default that I think are particularly notable are Pale Moon for web browsing, Pale Moon essentially being a fork of Firefox, which tends to run better on old computers. However, if your computer isn't powerful enough for Pale Moon, a very basic web browser called Dillo is also included by default. 
You also get Abbey Word and GNumeric. Abbey Word is a Word alternative and GNumeric is an Excel alternative. Both of these programs together give you a solid, lightweight Microsoft Office alternative. You also get Claws Mail for viewing your email, Goggles Music Manager for listening to music, MPV for watching video, Vunia for viewing images, and HexChat for hopping onto IRC and chatting with people. And that's only a very small selection of the software you get with Puppy Linux. Trust me, if there is something that you want to do with Puppy, it's probably covered. The only thing that I think is missing is some sort of PowerPoint program, but there's an, even an item in the start menu that will install the full LibreOffice suite for you. So all in all, I think the program selection in Puppy Linux is amazing, and I seriously cannot believe that they managed to fit all of this in 400 megabytes. However, despite how good Puppy Linux's software selection is, there will probably come a time when you need more software. And for that, Puppy Linux has two different options. The first is their own package manager, which should be fairly familiar to anyone that's used Synaptic Package Manager before. The second option is the more impressive and user-friendly of the two, a program called QuickPet. This program is not only adorably named, but is also very useful and easy to use. Essentially, QuickPet provides a list of programs that you can install from it. There are all sorts of useful programs that you can install, including a lot of programs that aren't even in most Linux distribution repositories. Additionally, most of the most popular Linux programs seem to be listed here. However, free software purists beware, because this program does list several non-free programs to install. For instance, Spotify and Zoom. However, just consider this. You could install Puppy Linux on someone's old computer, and within a few clicks they could be working on documents in LibreOffice while in a Zoom call or something. I consider that to be very impressive. QuickPet also gives you an easy way to update the software you have installed, change kernel version, search the Puppy Linux forms for answers to any questions you might have, and easily join the Puppy Linux IRC room. So all in all, I think that QuickPet is a very useful tool and easily a selling point of Puppy Linux. There are also lots of other useful utilities in Puppy Linux that you might want to take a look at, though I definitely think that many of them are aimed at more advanced users. In fact, Puppy Linux is so powerful out of the box that you can even basically make your own fork of it right out of the box using their remaster utility. Essentially what Remaster does is it takes your currently running system and generates an ISO file out of it. This could be useful if you want to make your own fork of Puppy Linux, or even just keep a backup of your own system. I think that with this utility the possibilities are endless, so I've got to say that is a pretty cool utility that's included by default with Puppy Linux. One of the main selling points of Puppy Linux is that you will never have to install it to your hard drive if you don't want to. You could continue to use it from the live media device indefinitely and keep your data on there. But at some point you might decide that you want to install Puppy Linux to your hard drive. And if you want to do that, you can use the Puppy Linux installer. Sadly, this is one of my few problems with Puppy Linux. The installer isn't particularly easy to use. You will have to manually partition your drive, and the install process is fairly complicated. I think if someone who isn't very tech savvy wants to use Puppy Linux, they're definitely going to need some help from someone who is tech savvy to install it. In the future, what I'd probably like to see from Puppy Linux is a single button installer. But with that said, Puppy Linux still isn't the most complicated distro out there to install, it's just not particularly easy. So in conclusion, I absolutely love Puppy Linux. I think that it's a very powerful distribution that punches well above its weight. It includes a variety of software, it's incredibly lightweight, and it's generally very easy to use. I think the main use case that I can imagine people using Puppy Linux for is older hardware. I imagine that Puppy Linux is probably going to end up on a lot of less tech savvy people's aging Windows XP machines and other older hardware. And to be honest, I don't really see any reason why not. Poppy Linux runs incredibly well on old machines like those, and it's remarkably easy to use. So with that said, that's it for today's video. Do you also like Poppy Linux? Let me know in the comments section below. I thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.